friends, we're going to discuss uh, Kelly's paper and some counter counterintuitive results. Uh, very counterintuitive. In other words, if someone offers you a bet, you have 70% probability of making a dollar and 30% probability of losing a dollar. Should you take it? Well, no. <laughs> In many cases, you should not take it. Not because you're risk averse. Simply, you should not take it because it's not a good strategy. <laughs> and we're going to see how. This answers, of course, some of the behavioral finance uh, nonsense uh, that you hear because they view things as one period model, not as a, a, a multi-period model. For example, your grandmother does not analyze the notion of smoking as a single event where you smoke a cigarette, but rather an activity of smoking. So risk-taking is an activity, not a single event. So once you put dynamics, as I've explained in Skin and the Game, uh, a lot of uh, the results uh, in uh, behavioral finance become nonsense, total nonsense. So let's see. So I, I start with, uh, I modified uh, the the proof in um, in Kelly using the right limits. But let's say you start with, you have VN is uh, your the value of the portfolio or your, your total wealth at period N is going to be V0, 1 plus R to the nth power, which is uh, discrete compounding. Uh, discrete compounding approach. Uh, so based on that, there exists an optimal combination, okay, not combination, uh, uh, an optimal uh, point. I'm going to see it here. It's a red dot. An optimal L. L is a, how much of your uh, total capital you invest. So you invest L of 1 means 100%. L of 0, nothing. L of 0.5 is one half. So there is an opt there exists an optimal L that uh, has been derived uh, by Kelly. Uh, again, I have a different uh, different approach, slightly different, just to make it consistent with the probability uh, uh, limits. And, uh, and and as you notice, uh, something quite strange is that your long term return, uh, return one plus r is going to be a uh, pretty much uh, the same as the Shannon entropy. Uh, the simply uh, why simply because the whole idea of Shannon entropy is based on how much um, noise you should have in your in your channel, and and there is a sweet spot, and it's the same sweet spot with Kelly. A sweet, how much too much noise, and the message will not go through. Too little noise, and it's you know uh, not optimal. So it's the same thing here. So let's look at uh, let's look at uh, the results here, and in one line of computer code, will uh, will illustrate it. Uh, the blue line here is a probability of zero of losing. Okay. Uh, the second one here is uh, the yellowish line is 0.05, uh, 0.1, uh, 20 percent of losing here, and of course 0.3 is the one we're going to focus on. Uh, 30% probability of losing. Now, what people found very counterintuitive in the story is that even if you have the odds and if you invest below a certain level, guess what? You're going to go bust. Say you invest 80% of your assets at all times into something that has a 30% probability of losing, 70% probability of winning, and symmetric. Uh, you know, you can, of course, uh, keep the probabilities constant and change the payoff, or you can change both, but let's simplify. Symmetric payoff, you get L, you get minus L, and, and of course, um, uh, how much you invest, of course, um, and, and then the probabilities are, are not symmetric. So, 30%. Let's say that you invest at 80%, more 80 Guess what? You're going to go bust. <laughs> Why will you go bust? Because there will be one, a few times when you're going to lose everything. <laughs> so the idea of long-term strategy, and that's Kelly's idea, is, is that there's a sweet spot. Now you see two uh, points here. Where you cross the line is where your return go negative, and, and you see it happens at high odds. <laughs> okay, it, these odds are between 0 and 50. So... And, and when you're certain to go negative, uh, 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 if you allocate at that level, eventually in the long run. And, and the red spot is your sweet spot where you maximize your, uh, your, uh, your, 
long term uh, rate of return. And and of course, these two are important, but the most important one is avoiding <laughs> bankruptcy. Let's take k0 equals zero. I have a simple algorithm, kt equals kt minus one, where you take your 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 your, your capital plus uh, uh, some risk, where you lose uh, uh, l uh, proportion of kt minus one or win l proportion of kt minus one. So let's say that you allocate at 0.3. I I allocate at 0.3. There you go. You have uh, T100. You have a seven percent rate of return. Whatever you have is stochastic because we did we do four runs for each. Okay. So um, if you allocate at 0.3, uh, okay, you see it's stochastic, but nevertheless they're positive. T100 after 100 periods. If you do 10,000 periods, it will take some time. You get about 7.8. Now let's say you invest at 0.8, which is we saw here. 0.8, you should be losing money. Look. Uh, okay, two survived, two didn't survive because it's short. We go 100,000. <laughs> You're bust, eventually bust, okay? So as you can see, right, from here, okay, the edge doesn't matter. There's a combination of how much you bet, which, of course, is uh, a function of... Uh, how many times you're going to repeat the bet uh, and, and a lot of other things. So this Kelly thing is trivial, as you can see it now. Particularly this graph makes things clear. But think about it. This destroys tens of thousands of papers in risk aversion, in, in the risk aversion literature that uh, evaluate things at one period model, not continuous uh, models. So since I wrote dynamic hedging, I have been fighting with people over ruin. Oh, no, ruin does not allow cost-benefit analysis. There's no cost-benefit analysis here. Or if you're going to do it, you have to do it over time. So my friend Oli Peters had, of course, uh, has been uh, fighting, of course, we, he and I have been fighting with Richard Taylor, who calls it something, an anti-hogwash, can explain why people turn down 50-50 bet, win 110, lose $100, pure loss aversion. Richard Taylor doesn't get multi-period models. Pretty much all his work is uh, BS. Uh, if you put more uh, richer structure, if you put more probabilistic rigor on it. And, um, and, and of course, Oli Peters uh, is very rigorous and, and has done a great job uh, promoting something he called ergodicity economics, where we look at things over time, multi-period models, not simply one-period model. Thank you for listening to me, and have a great day. Bye now.